So this is a documentary from Vice News, um, and it essentially follows families with trans children who are forced to flee, um, in particular the state of Texas, because of the laws. So um, let's go ahead and, and watch. Tell me when you guys are ready. Ready. One, two, three. All right, how are we doing? Are we lighting up? Oh, wait, 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 back a little, back a little. No, 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 no. Stay back, back <laughs> No, she hasn't even gone in far enough. <laughs> oh, my yeah. gosh. We went through everything, and I told the kids to keep what they thought wasn't replaceable or that they would need in the next two weeks. You can replace your bath towels, but you can't replace your kids. We are going to go right past Dollywood. I wish we had time to go, but... We don't, so. We did not have a plan until last night. There's only three states that are safe for trans kids and their families in the United States. Three. I know people think that there are more because there's liberal states, but we need one of the states that actually has policies, laws in place saying that they won't extradite parents of trans kids. Um, when states like Texas uh, come after us even after we move, Families with transgender children are dealing with a lot. They face constant attacks by right-wing misinformation, an unending stream of anti-trans bills, and even death threats. Did you get all this out here, Caleb? Thank you. And now, some are having to make a life-changing decision. Should they stay where they are, where their work, family, school, and life is, and risk their child's health and safety? All right, come on. Or should they flee? We spent time with three families in Texas and Arizona, two states with some of the harshest anti-trans legislation, as they weigh this heartbreaking decision. I started noticing the gender dysphoria when my was really able to play with toys. It was really from the time she could talk. She was like saying things like I'm a girl or when I grow up, I'll be a princess and I'll have long hair like Rapunzel. We used to say, like, you're a boy, but you can like girl things, that's okay. She was just always telling us who she was. How did you learn to make friendship bracelets? So I first learned when I was six and I went to day camp and my counselor taught me. How'd you choose these colors? It's just the trans colors, so I was like, okay, let's do that. How am I doing here? This is I'm looking doing really good, Ashley. What's like making you happy these days? I don't know. I have a few friends and they're nice and I don't know, I like swim. It kind of helps me. I'm sad, I just go to swim and I feel better. Coming to understand that our child was transgender was not something that happened overnight. This was years of therapy and it was a very long process. She was like a very anxious, depressed, weepy child. She would lick her lips till they were raw. She used to bite her nails till they bled. And then once she was able to transition. It was like the light switch got turned on inside of her. Instantly, it was. It was like the first time we saw real joy yeah. in our child. And this, this is the same story that we keep hearing from parents with trans kids. At first, they resisted it. They tried to, you know, hide it, get their kid to identify as the gender that they didn't feel comfortable with. But they always realized that once you let them transition and at this age, like we're talking about just social transition, right? That switch goes off to where they go from being this really sad, depressed kid to just being so happy. And that this is what Republicans want to take away. They want this kid right here to be miserable. They see this little girl and they think, nope. She needs to be what we say she should be. We should control the way that she expresses herself. It's genuinely so disgusting and psychotic. When Daniel was really small, he would say that he wanted to be Astro Boy or Aladdin. Like the He would deepen his voice. He would deepen his voice. The characters he identified with were all male. When he went to kindergarten, that was really difficult because school became very gendered for him. He would come home and cry and... Uh, say he was afraid to die. And we were like, why would that happen? If I thought I was like progressive and hip. I was like, girls can do anything. And he was like, but what if I don't want to be a girl? And I just didn't get it, right? I wasn't listening. We're just kids. 
we're often reduced to just body parts. We have so many other parts of ourselves and a lot of representatives don't don't get that. And how does that feel when you see the debate like going in that direction? I mean, I just get naturally just get grossed out. Yeah, totally. Because I feel like these are, we're just all human beings and these are other human beings debating on whether or not mine and existence should be normalized or cared for. Daniel's home state of Arizona already bans trans kids from playing sports and getting gender affirming surgery. State representatives have also tried to outlaw all gender affirming care, which doctors say can be life saving for trans youth. Those anti-trans representatives saying that they want to outlaw gender affirming care for youth. Like what goes through your mind? I get really freaked out. They want to like arrest parents or like pediatricians or th- or like people that are helping. And I just think like, okay, well, I don't want my parents to get arrested at all. And especially cause I'm like the kind of person where like if my mom doesn't answer the call, I'm like, okay, why do I tell the police that she's missing? You know, but like this, is, it's not like- Just to pause it. This is not something that children should be focusing on. Like I identify with this because one thing that really worried me um, and I wasn't a teenager, but when I came out in my young 20s uh, or early 20s, um, I was worried that like if my mom accepted me, but my dad rejected me, that I would lead to them getting a divorce or something like that. Like this, this should never be something that young people have to be concerned with. And I was a young adult at the time. I was in my early 20s. But this is a teenager who's sitting here worried. Oh, my God, is my mom going to go to jail? And then you... Think about how many kids are going to blame themselves if their parents get into trouble. It's just it's catastrophic. And Republicans, they know what they're doing. Like in this state of Arizona, with a uh, ban on uh, trans athletes in school sports, usually that just applies to trans girls. But NPR, I believe, did a study recently and they found that. A majority of the Republicans who sponsor these bills can't even cite a single example of a trans athlete causing problems in their school. So this is literally just about, hey, they just want to attack this community because they think that there's some political advantage to be gained. And it is genuinely nauseating. In February, things changed drastically in Texas when Governor Greg Abbott directed the state's Child Protective Services Agency to investigate families who support their children's gender-affirming care for, quote, child abuse. Texas law requires every adult to report these families, from doctors to neighbors, or risk criminal penalties. It's ridiculous. I live in America and I'm having to make an escape plan. I'm having to ask people if I can send my kid to go live with people, to put her somewhere safe until I can get there and get my life squared away just in case I have to. I mean, yeah, that what she says right there, I live in America and I'm having to make an escape plan. Don't ever let these Republicans tell you that they believe in freedom because they do not believe in freedom. What they're doing here, this is Orwellian. It's dystopian. It is fascistic. And they're just they're so sick. Like this is one of the lowest things that Republicans have ever done to go after children, like attacking the LGBTQ plus community, collectively speaking, in and of itself is very evil. But they've been targeting children lately. That like to, to target the most innocent of our population, there's just there's no coming back from that. Like it's just pure evil. Is the DoorDash person going to recognize our name? Are they an alt-right extremist? You know, is my neighbor who's very pleasant to talk to going to decide that it's their job to mandatorily report? Because Texas, every Texas citizen is a mandatory reporter here. It, it's pretty wow. What if they arrested mom? What if they took me somewhere? What if they forced me to be somebody who I wasn't? Mm-hmm. I always have these thoughts moving through my head. Like, what if this happens? Should I do this? Should I jump out the window? And like Republicans want to make that little girl dress like a boy. They want to call her a boy's name, force her to be who she doesn't want to be. Kids know. Kids know. And it's not like, like as that for uh, one of the first families explained, you know, it took years of therapy before they let their, their daughter transition. Um, you know, they're not just like, 
hearing their kids say, hey, I'm trans, and then next Tuesday they go out and they get bottom surgery. That's not happening. And so much of the transphobia would be cleared up if people just educating, educated themselves. Like, people think it's so easy in this country to get bottom surgery for children who are trans. First of all, that can't happen until you're 18. But even trans adults can't get bottom surgery because newsflash, we don't have a universal healthcare system. We have a fucked up healthcare system that's for profit. And in order to get any procedure, you have to have very good insurance. And sometimes you still have to pay. Sometimes you have a high deductible. It's just so ridiculous. When that came out, I got the call from Lisa about CPS. I was in my office and I started crying. I closed the door. You know, it, it, it scared me. It's so sad. It scared me because I wasn't sure if, it, if, if we were going to lose Maya. I wasn't sure if, if something happened, you know, with us. I, I went straight. He's worried about losing his kid because he took his kid to the doctor and the doctor said, this is the best thing to help your kid. And they demonstrably saw how transitioning helped their kid. And for taking the doctor's advice, he has to worry about losing his kid because Republicans thought it was a good idea to make uh, this a wedge issue. I, I just, I, I can't express, there are not enough words to express how loathsome the Republican Party is, um, especially in states like uh, Texas and uh, Florida. Down to the thinking that was the worst. Maya was real scared. Right away, there was a lot of questions oh, of, geez. Are they going to take me away from you? Unreal. What's going to happen? And that's and that's when that anxiety you can see it in her um, just come back. We started licking her lips, started biting her nails. It it was all over again. We hadn't seen that in seven years. Yeah. How do you feel like you're currently being affected by the? the state of Texas. Well, they really don't care if I kill myself and like they don't care if I no but they don't, they don't care if I can't play sports. They don't care if my parents get arrested for uh, supporting me. Like I feel really sad about it. Like Okay, just the fact that the thought of killing herself is even on her mind. I mean, this just goes to show you how these types of stories affect trans children. She hasn't been taken away from her parents, but the fear was instilled on her because of the state. And this was not a democratic decision. This is something that the governor did unilaterally. So just like hearing the news that you are public enemy number one is enough to make these kids feel extremely stressed out. It's just mentally draining. Yeah. The decision that our family faces right now um, is one that no family should have to consider. We shouldn't have to feel that we're being pushed out of the state we live in. We are now at a point where if things don't change, we will probably have to leave this state. Florida, Texas, and Arizona mirror and mimic each other. So watching what was happening in Texas was terrifying. Oh my God. Oh my God. We have all of our family and friends here. We love. have a beautiful community that we are a part of. Daniel would lose more than he would gain if we left this state. Because my grandparents are Holocaust survivors, because my grandfather fought in the resistance, my grandmother survived Auschwitz. That language of calling on everyday citizens and mandated reporters to report families with trans youth to the authorities felt eerily reminiscent of that directive from the Nazis to report Jewish families to the authorities. This is... This is white Christian nationalism. This is fascism. Yep. 1,000%. My 1, parents were, were both uh, ranchers in Mexico. 
and uh, during the 60s. And so I came here when I was nine years old. Uh, there was always talks about if you get in trouble, uh, immigration can come and, and take you. And not only that, uh, it's going to create all kinds of other problems for the family. So, so the, the, there was this, this stress that not only would I hurt myself, but I, I would hurt the entire family. We already understood what bias in the world feels like. We know what it's like to navigate, to code switch. But it's not normal for us as Americans to be saying that we need to seek refuge and sanctuary in other states. This is tough. It's just thinking about what we're going to have to do, thinking about leaving everybody, leaving our home, friends, family, starting a whole new life. It just feels overwhelming. Yeah. It makes me sad because I've already build, built friendships and I have family here and I sometimes I'll just have dreams like, like my parents were being taken away from me because I was trans. And then I had to go to a foster care and I had to move all the way to Illinois. If someone tried to take you away from me, I would not let that happen. I will do anything to keep you safe and with us and happy. I I think the thing that I am most worried about is, will I wait too long? Will I not know when it's time to cut my losses and just flee? For the Shapleys, that decision came in July. Do the thing. Yeah! Seeing the anti-trans threats building over the summer, Kimberly started packing before she'd even found a place to live. OMG, guys, look, it's the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> so nice. We just passed Arkansas and we're in Tennessee now. We're in Kentucky. We're almost in Ohio. She drove two and a half days straight to Connecticut, hitting just a few truck stops for gas, snacks, and naps. We're back in the car, four hours, 29 minutes away from where we're heading. The night before we left Texas, that was the first time I ever really saw Kai just sobbing. It was just something triggered her. She started thinking about our chickens and what we were leaving. I promised them. I promised them they would have a good home with me. The truth is, it would be devastating, financially devastating for us to move. It's not just the loss in income, it's cost of living because the states with which have broad protections in place and where we would be safe are, you know, more expensive. There are currently only three states that protect families of trans kids from extradition, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and California. Just last month, D.C. also passed protections. These are parts of the country, though, where the cost of living is up to 40% higher than the national average, and that's on top of the cost of starting over. We're starting from scratch. Beds, pillows, covers, sheets, towels, blankets, measuring cups, coffee. We should not leave here without having a way to make coffee in the morning. When I saw the relief from her when we got out, and the relief from Caleb. A gigantic 100,000 pound weight lifted off my back. Like they have been through so much. The GOP has done so much damage to my family, mental, emotional damage. We're in a new place. It's not gonna be a long season, but it's gonna be a season of rest and renewal for us. I've been sleeping with my mom because I've been so terrified. I hope that I can sleep in my own bed calmly and peacefully. I've been having all these nightmares, and I'm hoping that maybe since we're in a new place, I can start fresh. I can want so sad. things to change in Texas, but still realize when it's no longer safe for us to work behind enemy lines. We need to get some things right, or I don't see any place in the U.S. being the safe haven that people think they're going to have in their blue bubbles. Are you seriously considering going to Canada? Yes. I've already spoken to an immigration attorney and trying to um, get things together in the event that we have to to leave. Which is very close. It's, it's very close. You can feel it. 
I think people need to wake up and help the LGBTQ community. It's almost too late. We have some big news it's almost in the too race late. for Governor. Governor Greg Abbott with 55% support. He has been declared the winner. Oh, sweet. Lots of texts and messages. Good morning, buddy. I hope you're doing okay this morning. I'm thinking about you. No matter what happens, you and I will always stay tight regardless of where you live. <laughs> it's not just our family that has to lose out. <laughs> After the results came in, we were talking to Maya and... You know, she says, I want to move. I want to be in a, a state that, that I don't have to fight for, for my rights to be myself. It's very sad. We have to do what we have to do for, for, for the family. Um, and we have to cut our losses and move to a state that cares about us. Most importantly, a state where Maya will feel safe. She deserves to be a kid and she deserves to feel safe and she doesn't feel that way here anymore. So it's time to go. It's wild to wake up and realize that in this day and age, we're essentially political refugees. We're in that background right over here. In Arizona, Democrats won big in the midterms, a win for the Trujillos, who are staying put for now. This idea of like states' rights versus federal protections, like we should be weary of what that actually means because that has been used to marginalize people since the beginning of this country. We've seen this over and over and over again in American history. Like if you don't assimilate to white Christian ideology, then we will punish you. We saw this with indigenous people. We saw this with enslaved people. We saw this with migrant youth on the border. And that is terrifying. I refuse to, to, to leave. I, I refuse to, to be put in a, in a position where I get, I get pushed out of society all over again. Our families already came from another country to build a better life here. And we should not be uprooted from our homes. We're willing to put everything in the line. Every, everything in the line. Everyone should be worried. Everyone should be worried because if they're doing this to us, who will they do it to next? Exactly. Comments are turned off. And the reason why the comments are turned off is because the last time they did a video following um, Kai, which is one of the little girls that we saw here, um, it got like dislike bombed. People are so hateful that even when you hear their stories, and you see what's at stake, um, people still are just like, I don't give a fuck. This is grooming. This is bad. Um, so that's where we're at. And, and the thing that stuck out to me is that um, it could be too late. Like, it's time to stand up for LGBTQ plus rights if it's not already too late. That's such a huge thing to think about because, I, I mean, think of how far we've gone. When you're investigating families with trans kids and they're literally forced to flee, that's when I feel like you've crossed the Rubicon, right? And that lady made a great point about states' rights. Like, states' rights to do what? Terrorize these children and turn these families into political refugees? It's just insane. And one thing that I want to say is that somebody made the point uh, of, um, I don't know who said it in chat, but basically it's good to know that these kids at least have loving families. That's a really great point because without them, it'd be so much worse. Like, imagine if you didn't have supportive parents and you only had one supportive parent. Um, that would be so much more difficult. But because these parents have given their children their unconditional support, I think these kids are going to be okay in the end. But for right now, they're under attack. And it's just, it's, it's morally reprehensible. So yeah, these Republicans are sick. And it doesn't matter. Like if you show that documentary to somebody like, I don't know, a Steven Crowder viewer, for example, they just don't care. They don't care. Even though they know that these laws terrorize children, literally give these little girls nightmares, they don't care. They've decided that these little kids killing themselves is preferable to allowing trans people to exist. That's where we're at in the United States. Like, this is genocide that we're seeing. And 
people aren't going to wake up to it until it's too late. So if you're if you're not trans, then you might just brush this aside. Um, but as one of the parents said, they're like, okay, they're going after trans people exclusively now. But what happens when they go after a different community, your community, someone you love? So this is why there needs to be solidarity with people across the board. Because, I mean, if you don't have solidarity, things like this can happen.